Greetings to us and welcome to another video. So, um, I've been testing around with different decks for the format. I've been testing about with ratios, strategies, as you already saw, like I already showcased like one of the decks that I like playing this format, um, which is like the tier limit deck. Um, now I'm going to talk about a deck that's very, very different. Um, this particular deck has a very different playstyle than the element. Um, it has a very, very different end board or a different like game plan. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so, uh, for a little bit of history, this is not an original concept. This is not something like very, very new or innovative. Um, it, in 2019, there was a YCS, which was YCS Pasadena, and this particular variant of Sky Striker, uh, with the True Draco engine, uh, was piloted at the event, and it made it to the finals. It did not win the event, the event was won by Sky Striker Orchest, but um, it was a deck that was very interesting back then and I kind of wanted to test the theory if the Draco cards were good enough to bolster the striker engine once again because the deck is now stronger than it was back then back then like we only had one Kagari we only had like uh, less co we had less copies of Widow Anchor Engage was a 3 which was very very important and like and Diagram was also at 3, but um, we had less Draco monsters as well. We had a Linkage who was not in the game, neither was Zeke. So, like, even though the concept of the deck is the same as back in 2019, the playstyle is very, very different because we have a lot of different tools. Like, uh, the Triple Tactic cards are also very very strong in a deck like this one, but yeah, like this is the example of a mid-range killer deck. Uh, a deck like this one is made to beat like uh, it's made to beat like not super heavy combo decks, like uh, floodgate decks, trap decks, like decks like those you're going to have a very significantly good matchup against against the combo heavier decks um, you might have to like side for them but something really cool about a deck like this one is that this deck can not only just play through floodgates but it can also play a lot of really good floodgates themselves um, like you can play skill drain for example um, there can only be one, it's another really good floodgate you can play in this deck. Um, like, you can even play Rivalry, even though you're playing the Striker cards. Like, Ghost and Mesh is a weird one, but you can also play it. Um, like, there are so many different floodgates in the game. Obviously, we don't want to encourage people to play them, but if you are facing, like, uh, a combo heavy format this is a deck that can adapt to like almost any format that we're playing in um, and I'll showcase you one duel uh, which kind of tells you teaches you what I'm talking about but yeah um, I guess I'll talk about uh, I'll bring up the ratios and I'll bring up the reason why we play certain cards um, for the monsters we only have six we only have Dynamite, Ignis Heat, Ray, and Rose. Um, again, if we're in a different format or if we already know what format we're establishing, we can change these ratios. We can play less Draco cards, we can play more hand traps, we can even main like the high impact hand traps like Nibiru, for example. Um, but yeah, like this is. Uh, I you don't want to play too many monsters. The spell cards are pretty much like the boon of this deck, 
and you're not worried about not getting to your cards because you have a lot of cards that can tutor each other out and so you won't be lacking monsters like anytime soon um, for the striker spells you have to engage to a multi roll three area zero booster hornet drones shark cannon widow anchor linkage um, these ratios are interchangeable um, you can play less copies of our chart cannon or more copies of chart cannon it really depends on the format um, I decided to play it safe and just play two for now um, I think this is a definite two of like you can make the argument of playing three just so it resolves but you will be seeing this card enough times that you really don't need uh, enough copies and you don't want to clog your hands with multiple copies of this card even though it has like a very powerful effect uh, uh, that baits your opponent's cards um, obviously if engage was a 3 we would have played 3 but uh, it's a 2 and I think Konami is going to keep it at 2 uh, for the foreseeable future like they are they, they they are pretty much aware that if this card ever goes back to three it's just going to be a splashable engine for other decks pretty much like how people are doing that with the runic engine um linkage is a very very good card this card was not around when sky strikers like was at their prime in 2019 um but it is now and like this card can help you OTK, this card can help you dodge through cards. The uh, really cool thing about Linkage is that it has synergy with the Draco spell and traps. Um, so, because uh, you have to send a card a resolution or as part of the effect to, uh, to summon a monster. So you can just send your true Draco cards and they will trigger. So this card kind of becomes like another interruption for your opponent, uh, in a sense. Um, Widow Anchor is no brainer, you're always going to play 3. Um, one thing Sky Striker is known for is like trying to use your opponent's monsters against them just to like either end the game or just like twist the game to your favor. Um, I think Triple Tactics Talents and Thrust are made for a deck like this one. You're not, uh, you're always trying to go second with this deck unless you play against like an FDK style of deck then uh, at that moment you kind of have to change your strategy and go back to like what I was saying before and just play floodgates um, but most of the time you're going second with this deck so these cards are very very ideal um, but yeah like um, it's pretty cool like this deck is super adaptive there are no real combos in this deck or you pretty much just want to like break the board with your draco cards and your sky striker cards one thing i will talk about is why am i playing three ignis heat and three heritage um usually you see lesser copies on non-pure draco builds um the reason you max out on these is because Going second, this card baits a lot of cards from your opponent. Like, if you tribute a card for Ignis Heat and you're trying to pop their cards or trying to like deal with their board, uh, your opponent will try to interact with you, which makes Ignis Heat a card that interacts with your opponent. And if your opponent gets rid of the Ignis Heat midway, that means your heritage is going to net you at least one or two draws which is something that kind of swings the tempo of the game like imagine just drawing two out of heritage and then drawing two out of talents it's just really, really strong in a simplified game you know, in a, simpli in a simpli simplified game state this deck is pretty much like runic like if the, your engine is rolling you're incredibly hard to stop you're going to be very ahead of your opponent um, in advantage and yeah like the extra deck needs no explanation like um you are maxing out Kadakari because it's the best striker monster it's like 
Kadari does recycling engage, it's just really really strong. Um, like Hayate gets you to your engine. Um, Zeke is a card that you can link away with your Draco cards or with other cards your opponent has. Um, I guess I'll talk about Clara and Rushka. Um, there will be times where you have Draco cards and you just want to like have your Draco cards online after you push your through your opponent's boards with your Draco monsters. And just having a link monster that you can use to link away your uh, like through Dracos is pretty good. Um, you're probably noticing that I don't have neither jamming waves nor afterburners in this deck. Um, the main reason for that is because whatever you're trying to fulfill with those two cards, you're already establishing that with the Draco engine. So there is no real need for playing another card that just functions the same thing your engine is already doing. You want cards that try to plus you in advantage and just get you back in the game. Um, but yeah, uh, since I already explained that, I guess I'm going to show you a replay and it kind of tells you something that uh, it's kind of like a matchup that you're looking for when playing a deck like this one. Um, I lost the die roll, my opponent goes first, he's playing uh, Eldritch. Eldritch is already pretty known for playing Floodgates. Um, I have the Feather Duster, but the thing about it is like until I resolve the multi-roll, uh, I won't Feather Duster them. You can make the argument that Feather Duster pretty much like won me the game, but this is just a duel that showcases you like how the Striker engine works and the synergy it has with the Draco cards. Um, as you can see there, I'm popping Linkage, I activate Disciples, Tribute, pop the Area 0, Area 0 gives me Ray, and um, and I OTK them. So that was one game. Now for the next one. Um, this time there is no um, there is no Feather Duster and he makes me go first. Um, I the, and this is just an example of how the Draco engine is supposed to beat all those floodgates. As you can see, my opponent opened multiple floodgates, and not only that, they opened like multiple solemn judgments, so they have protection for their floodgates. Um, I already had the Ash Blossom ready for whenever they try to like do Scarlet uh, Sanguine, but yeah, like. He, as you can see, he flipped rivalry, and I, I don't mind playing the slow game. Uh, like pretty much, the Draco engine is just going to give you more and more advantage as the game goes on. And area zero, like synergy with the spell and traps, is really, really strong because, like as you can see there, like solid judgment was not an issue because I popped it. Uh, the engine kind of resolved, Heritage netted me a few draws. He didn't flip the second solar judgment on the Heritage, which is kind of fair, like, it doesn't want to, like, automatically lose the game just because he tried to one for one. And, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the duel. But yeah, like, goes in, rivalry, like, he had the Scarlet Sanguine, but we already had the Ash Blossom. Um, multiple solemns, like a deck like this one should not be a hard matchup for you. And if you are paired against a combo deck, um, you just adapt to that combo deck. Um, so it's very very soon to tell if this strategy is going to be like viable for the new format, but in theory is looking very very correct i think there's a lot of advantages with this deck uh, this kind of deck um if the format is mid-range and not combo heavy you're going to have a very very huge advantage if the format does become combo heavy um this deck can be adapted to just handle it um a really bad matchup right on the spot, I think, it would be Runic. And it's not because of them floodgating you out of the game. That's not the real issue. The real issue with the Runic cards is that in a, 
against slower decks, uh, that engine can outpace your engine if they get their ball rolling. Um, if you can halt their engine on the spot, and you can like d deal with whatever they put on the board uh, real quickly, then you should have an advantage. Uh, another advantage you have over Rudik is that they don't have a battle phase, and you do, um, which is also something really, really strong. Um, like off the top of my head, other matchups that you're probably going to be facing are pretty much like Labyrinth, uh, like Branded, Mathmic is probably still around, the Sprite, and realistically, you shouldn't struggle against any of those decks if you like draw into your engine um but that's it for me uh i hope this video was very informative um keep practicing and keep doing